May 5th, 2018. Small reserve along the Lake Erie shoreline. At the peak of migration season, when the birds migrate from the tropics of Central and South America to nest in North America, it was cool enough for me to take my jacket off and tie it around my waist. I first noticed him flitting around one side of the boardwalk. Next thing I know, that, that little gold nugget landed on a branch directly over my head. I dared not move. The most I usually see of birds like him is just a vaguely bird-shaped blur of color bouncing viciously from branch to branch. But not this time. He was so close, not even five feet away, that I could see his throat moving as his liquid, hopeful song poured across the marsh. even over the chatter of other bird watchers and red-winged blackbirds. <sighs> but of course, that flock of birders soon gathered around me as word spread, such as it is with warblers at the biggest week in American birding, the so at the so-called warbler capital of the world, <sighs> Mepingee Marsh. Now, if only I had a camera. Would anyone in the audience consider yourself a nerd? Come on, don't be shy, we're all friends here. <laughs> I know I definitely am one, a bird nerd. I think it may have started with the, growing up with the family parrot screeching over my head every day. And ever since I job shadowed the volunteer coordinator at Allwood Audubon Center in sixth grade, my love for birds only grew. I am now a member of the Bruckner Nature Center Young, Young Birders Club and a recruit a life list, a list of the total number of species I've seen throughout my life of 142 different bird species. Now that may sound like a lot, but that is only a very tiny fraction of the 10,000 plus species around the world. I have also learned the calls of many birds to the point that I can hear them without having to see them, like the inquisitive yet seem seemingly go away, you're bothering me, barn owl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, I'm not perfect, but nevertheless, birds hold such an important place in my life that I want to do everything in my power to help scientists learn about them. And to do so, I participate in what's known as citizen science, or now starting to be known as community science. The Cornell Lab defines citizen science as a project in which volunteers pr get, collect data for scientists in order to help them answer real-world questions. The projects I participate in, the Cornell Lab's eBird and Nest Watch, are two examples of this. So with eBird, I go out birding somewhere and submit a checklist like this. Now this checklist has a lot of information on it, from where I was, at, where I was birding, when I was birding, what and how many birds I saw, and depending upon the birder, you might even get details on the weather. Now, Nest Watch is a little bit simpler, but it's slightly more restrictive to protect the birds and nests. With that one, I go up to a nest every three or four days, take a peek inside, count the number of eggs and chicks, maybe take a photo or two, and leave as quickly as possible. The most I try to spend is about five minutes, so it can be pretty hard to pull myself away from this much cuteness. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Being a scientist who would rather watch Bill Nye than SpongeBob, I particularly enjoy this participation. But what amazes me is the data that Cornell can pull from all of this. Now, this is the eBird science page. I've pulled data on the prothonotary warbler as an example. The graphs represent the, change, the regional distribution of, very, of this particular species across different times of the year, depending on the color. And the graph represents how many, the number of individuals you are likely to see per habitat type throughout the year. Now what's cool is this is actually all gathered from checklists like mine, and not just a few checklists from a handful of birders. I am talking millions of checklists from over 400,000 birders around the world who have collectively submitted over 5 million audio, video, and image files, which can then be used in other Cornell resources, such as their Merlin Bird ID app. And in fact, 
Last year, there were 45 research papers that used eBird data, according to eBird. Some of the topics on those papers included species diversity in urban habitats, the effects of oceanic plastic debris on seabirds, and why crows attack ravens. Actually, I'm half tempted to read that last one. <laughs> now, maybe bird is not your flavor of nerd. I'm curious what the audience's interests are. Go, go on, give me some ideas. Shut them up. Well, they're all very good research topics. And you know what? If you can think of a researchable topic with your interests, there is more than likely a citizen science project dedicated to it. There are many topics you could cover. Animals, wild, wildlife, watersheds, agriculture, astronomy, even medicine. The list is endless. A quick search on SciStarter.com's project finder, which lists citizen science projects around the world and is partly funded by the National Science Foundation, lists over 1,400 projects in the United States alone. Want to help identify mixed breed dogs? There's a project for that. Do you have a rain gauge in your backyard or enjoy taking photographs of clouds? You can submit those photographs and measurements to NASA. And you know what? Maybe we owe it to them. There's a lot to learn from citizen science participation. In fact, I myself have become a better, more ethical birder through my participation in eBird and NestWatch. I've learned from the eBird website and other Cornell resources, and even the eBird community, how to be respectful towards my fellow birders and the birds. And these are things I'm, I even learned bird ID tricks, and these are probably things I would not have learned otherwise, all of which I am extremely grateful for. Citizen science is an incredibly powerful tool. We can help scientists learn about the world around us, all the while indulging in and learning about our passions. And you know what? Citizen science is now starting to become known as community science, to say that, yes, you can participate. You don't have to be a quote-unquote citizen of a particular country. You can be anywhere and anyone. Now, eventually, my little gold nugget of prothonotary warbler flew off into the marsh's depths, and while I'm unlikely to ever see that particular individual again, I still chase moments like that, still seek the opportunity to, to find the birds I'm familiar with, like the red-tailed hawk, and the birds that are new to my life list, like the short-eared owl. And who knows, maybe your gold nugget will be the next big discovery through citizen science. Thank you.